Stargazers are eagerly anticipating the return of one of the best shows in the cosmos. The Perseid meteor shower expected to peak from midnight tonight to dawn on Friday. It's an annual celestial shower and has been ongoing since July 24th, but this is the best week to make some wishes on those shooting stars. Paul Delaney joins us now, professor of physics and astronomy at York University. Paul, good to see you. Glad you're well. Yes, indeed, Morella. Thank you very much. Now, do you stay up for this kind of thing? I imagine you've seen so much and so many over the years that maybe you pass it by. Uh, I do go out. I must admit I don't go out for three or four hours anymore, but I certainly, weather permitting, will be outside later this evening around about midnight. As you indicated, the Perseids is one of the best shows going, and so it's not to be missed, especially given warm weather. Okay, so give me an idea of what can be seen from midnight on. Well, this is, uh, loosely speaking, a celestial fireworks display. We're talking about particles left over from a comet by the name of Swift-Tuttle entering our atmosphere at 10 kilometers a second, creating literally a barrage of shooting stars. And so if you are in a dark enough site, obviously it's, it's, it's less visible in bright city environments. But if you can be a little further away from those bright lights, you will see emanating from the constellation of Perseus over in the southeast sky, lots and lots of shooting stars, as many as one shooting star a minute, potentially more if you're in a really dark site. So as I said, a celestial fireworks display is on tap, weather permitting tonight and tomorrow night. Okay, so can the whole country see this? Absolutely. This is one of those events where anybody in the Northern Hemisphere, weather permitting, no clouds, uh, will be able to see it. Best viewed after midnight if you can wait up that long just because of the geometry of the Earth's orbit. But you can still see some earlier in the evening. The later you can stay up, the better. And as I said, the darker the skies, the better will be the sight. But anywhere in Canada, absolutely fine. So what causes this? You said, and we know it happens every year, but what actually causes it? It's a stream of debris that has been cast off by a comet. Comet Swift-Tuttle orbits the sun once every 133 years, and it is discharging particulate material. It's just basically throwing gravel out into its orbit. And that orbit, of course, is governed by gravity. It goes around the sun just like the comet does, just like the Earth does. And every year from July to August, literally the Earth runs across that gravel train, and those pieces of material hit our atmosphere at literally literally tens of kilometers a second. So it's as regular as clockwork and uh, always a good sight. And do we know if some years are better than others for, for sighting this or can you tell that ahead of time if it's going to be a better year? Yes, you can. I mean, it, it's best when you're as close to the comet as you possibly can be. But that happened in 1992. And as I said, it's 133 years. But what makes the uh, appearance improve is the lack of moonlight. You know, if you've got that big searchlight in the sky, it again brightens the sky and you don't see the fainter meteors, the fainter shooting stars going across the sky. We're only a couple of days past new moon. So the moon will set tonight around about 1030 or thereabouts. Me meaning that if you're up at midnight, the skies will be perfectly dark, and that really does improve your uh, viewing pleasure. And tonight and tomorrow night. That is correct. The peak is actually literally around about sort of midday tomorrow when you know, the sun's up. Not not good. But tonight and tomorrow night, equally good. But if your weather doesn't allow it, you know, try for Saturday night. You might see, say, one shooting star every two minutes. Not as good as tonight or tomorrow night. Still an impressive sight.